I've just loaded the first developer preview of Android 12 on my Pixel 4a 5G, so let's dive in and see what's new. Now, if you saw those leaked Android 12 screenshots from a little while back, you're probably super excited about the changes that might be coming to the new version of Android. But at least on developer version one, you might be a little disappointed because it does look pretty similar to Android 11. Doesn't mean that it's not gonna look like those leaked screenshots a little further down the line, but right now, yeah, it's not too much of a surprise, but there are a few things to look at that have changed and some usability things and some interface tweaks as well. So let's get into it. But the first thing obviously is this is a developer version. So things are subject to change. If you are gonna install this on your own device, you do so at your own risk, you know, the usual disclaimers, but you know, you're smart, you know what to do. So let's first up go into the notifications shade. So let's pull it down and you'll see that the notifications themselves are just a little bit bigger overall. Uh, there's a bit more white space and people's icons and stuff like that are just a little bit bigger. Now, the other thing that is new about the notification shade is you can now toggle on a specific setting in the menus to change that snooze icon on the right hand side. So you can actually toggle it on and off for say one hour, 15 minutes, 30 minutes or two hours. Now that little icon is new. You've always a were able to snooze notifications in the shade, but it was a little harder to get to. So it's kind of nice that there's just this now big alarm clock or snooze button that you can press to change that. Now you'll see that things are pretty similar to Android 11 so far. We don't have those four icons at the top on the notification shade like we were expecting. There are still six, but let's dive into the actual settings menu because a couple things have changed. Now the search bar at the top is just a little bit bigger than on Android 11. So two is your Google name or profile image in the top right hand corner. And if you go into a particular sub menu, such as the battery, for example, but all of them look like this, that background is now a light blue rather than reflecting the mode that you're in. So I'm expecting that is probably gonna have something to do with how those themes look on those leaked screenshots, or at least I hope that that's something that we can change later on. Now, the other thing that you'll also notice when you go into one of those sub menus is that the toggles at the top of each are much bigger. So for example, in the locations tab, you'll see that use location, that toggle on the right hand side is much bigger and you can turn it off and on. You'll see that check mark to confirm if it's on and that minus symbol to show you that it is off. So that's a nice change to show you like front and center if it's turned off or on again. Now, one of the rumored things that I was really excited about in Android 12 was back tap. So be able to tap the back of the phone to actually take a screenshot, for example, or even launch the Google Assistant. Now, the, actually the setting is in the menu. So if we go down to system and then find gestures, you'll see that the double tap is an option but the animation doesn't quite reflect what it is yet. It's still double pressing the power button, but you'll see those options, open assistant, take screenshot, play and pause media, see recent apps and open notifications. Now, unfortunately, you'll see me double tapping. It doesn't work yet, but hopefully it's gonna be you know, rolled out in the next developer version or the public beta. So that's something that I'm personally looking forward to. I do like that feature on iOS and it's been something that Android users, I think have been kind of like teased with for a little while, at least on the stock version of Android. So I'm looking forward to that. Something else, don't know if you care, but if you take a screenshot, you'll now be able to add an emoji like so. Oh, sad face, but you know, as a sticker. Do you care? I mean, you know, it's a thing. The other thing that you'll be able to do, even though I haven't been able to activate it on this version yet, is to have a scrolling screenshot. So if you have a long web page, for example, you'll be able to take the whole thing as a screenshot, as a recording. The other thing that's new is obviously Nearby Share was released, you know, a little while ago, which is useful for sharing things like files between other Android devices. But now you'll be able to Nearby Share your Wi-Fi password. So you could use a QR code before and scan it with the camera, but now you just tap that Nearby Share and you'll be able to find other devices and you can share your password pretty simply. Now let's go back into the settings menu and take a look at the media player settings. Now this one is actually in sound and vibration. So here we go. We go down to sound and vibration and then tap into media. 
you'll actually see that all of the apps that you have that do support media playback that usually show up in your notification shade now have toggles so you can turn on and off the ones that you do want to appear. This is particularly useful if you're trying to just generally change state between a lot of different apps and sometimes one overtakes the notification shade when you don't want it to. So you now get some more granular control. And finally, let's look at the um, UI overhaul that kind of we kept getting promised in all of those leaked screenshots. Now I can't show that to you, but there have been some reports on Twitter where developers have been able to find a one-handed mode in the UI. Um, and that actually basically pushes all of the iconography down a little bit on the screen to make it easier to use big phones such as the Pixel 4 a 5G one-handed. It's a little similar to Samsung's One UI. So if you're a fan of that, you'll probably be a fan of this particular implementation. Again, I can't show it to you because I haven't found out how to toggle it on, but stay tuned because there are plenty more tweaks, hidden features in Android 12 to dive into. But this has just been a quick preview of what to expect. Some of the other stuff behind the scenes and under the hood to expect are things like spatial audio support, as well as HEVC support, even for apps that don't natively support it. And there's of course, lots of different privacy and security tweaks under the hood. So with all that said, make sure to stay tuned to CNET. We'll have lots more articles and deep dives into extra new features of Android 12. And if you find some extra hidden features, please let me know and leave me a comment. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.